How's it going fellow traders? This is Magic Trader here and this is the CFTC report for May 16, 2017. And so this is the report that I uh, I posted this past weekend. And I uh, took uh, an image, of a very famous image of the girl standing in front of the bull. And why did I do that? Well, because uh, over the last couple weeks we've seen that the hedge funds have uh, start to become very bullish the euro and so one of the themes that um, I was uh, looking at this past weekend was whether or not this uh, uptrend on the euro is going to sustain itself or is it going to have a, uh, a dead end in the near future so we'll go over that on this um, on this companion video and we'll look at the data and we'll look at what the institutions are doing with the the euro and what could possibly happen in the near future All right but before we do that let's get to gold let's take a look at what gold's doing so on gold uh, a few weeks ago we were aggressive up in this area here okay we were aggressive gold uh, to the long side and then all of a sudden the last couple of weeks price dropped which is this big candle here and then this one here which is the longs being closed out which causes the drop and then uh, during this candle of consolidation here we have uh, longs closing out just a little bit more and as that's happening what do we have over this last week we have uh, shorts increasing from 86k to 94k so shorts being added to down here in this area now before I go further I want to mention something um, the the rules in the community are very specific on how to draw trend lines and and how to uh, draw zones and all that stuff but um, I've come to do my own testing and I've come to learn my own things uh, in trading that I feel comfortable with and so I've changed some of the rules to be customized to my view of the market and what I see on the charts so uh, many times you're gonna see that I'm drawing trend lines differently like this trend line here okay as opposed to drawing it like this okay because technically this low closed lower than this this candle here so that's a drop and the latest two valleys is are those two so the trend line is drawn like this and uh, in my trading plan I don't look for areas I don't look at areas like this as a valley because to me nobody nobody sees that as a valley and if nobody is seeing that as a valley and the institutions are not seeing that as a valley then then nobody's trading off of those areas all right now yeah you could say well look it tested this area but uh, let's look at that gold let's look at that together really quickly and see why it's hitting that area and reacting okay so it's hitting that area yeah well here you go that's why it's reacting to that area to the pip take a look at that okay that's why you see because even this here is very very um, questionable whether you're gonna consider that to be a, a valley or not I mean a slight drop here and then you know we would constitute that as a valley but I'd uh, I'd question that and see the reason why I'd question that is because the next area that should be um, taken into consideration if this was not going to be your trend line would be this one here and that's exactly where price dropped and we're getting the reaction from it okay so that's why I draw my trend lines differently because I'm only looking to draw obvious trend lines if they're not obvious I'm not drawing them so if it's not clear enough I consider it to be a CP which is something that Alfonso has said many times if it's not clear enough for you consider it a CP so these areas are not clear I'm drawing it as a uh, I'm considering that as a CP so getting back to gold 
as you can see I drew a trend line up like this which gives me a weekly supply zone that we're we're hitting right now so um, with weekly supply being hit right now we only have data to reflect this one candle of consolidation here and uh, what we can see during this consolidation candle is that shorts were being aggressive were being added to aggressively but one cell of aggression is not enough for me to start wanting to trade in that direction because I've seen it many times where we get one cell of of aggression and then uh, then it means nothing and price reverses so here's an example right we want two three cells that's that's what we're looking for once we get one two three cells um, three uh, short cells um, colored in red showing the aggressive aggressiveness of the institutions then I start to take it serious usually usually two cells and I start to pay attention but one is not enough for me to pay attention all right so what do we see here with the institutions they took off longs close off longs causing the big drop in price okay so we got that they are um, closing off longs for for some profit taking and that causes price to drop but it also bro breaks through this trend line so that drop caused a break of a trend line and now we are retracing back up to that origin of the break which is this area here all right so this candle here shows us that shorts were being added to um, long exposure dropped over the last few weeks uh, we were in a slight green bullish territory here for a while but not any longer now we're the blue the cells are blue so the cells being blue means neutral means don't do anything for me my short-term bias is I'm not making any maneuvers on gold because ideally what I'd like to see is I'd like to see price react off of this weekly supply zone which is actually testing a three-month trend line right here okay so the three-month trend line boom 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 reaction to the downside so weekly while at a three-month trend line I'd like to see price drop from this area here break through here and this is where I'd like to take longs this area down here all right so will I be taking trades um, well right now my note says no shorts for now because you know this weekly uh, supply area we could get a deeper penetration and then it moved to the upside and then uh, finally a move so I'm waiting for something to happen off of this reaction if we get a drop that's if we get a drop I'm waiting for something to happen off of this weekly zone to give me an indication of what I should be doing what uh, might possibly happen is on next week's report we'll see once price hits well prices now hit this weekly supply zone so on next week's report we should probably see supply coming back into the markets and so we'll look at here on the shorts we'll see um, the 94,000 climb up even higher and um, maybe some more longs being taken off until price gets down here and then down here we'll probably see longs added to but let's let's wait and see what happens with next week rip, next week's report my guess is we'll see the shorts being added to and then a drop but we'll wait and see for that okay next is oil and uh, what do we see on the charts for oil we see that longs were slightly taken off and that's as price was uh, dropping into a non two to one uh, monthly demand zone so longs were being taken off uh, shorts are still aggressive they have been over the last three weeks but they uh, they took some off as price dropped okay so price dropped and consolidated longs were taken off and shorts were taken off right now coloration of the cells here for long and short exposure indicates that we are in a neutral bias so meaning do nothing yeah I'd like to take some longs off of this area here on confirmation obviously 
but we do have a, a trend line here on the weekly and I'd like to hold off on uh, on taking trades until at least this trend line is tested and then I get some really nice areas of demand to uh, be able to to take a trade long ideally even a daily zone that breaks this weekly trend line um, would be a decent move to the upside uh, or a decent setup to take it to the upside but we'll see right now I'm not doing anything on uh, on oil I want to see how it's going to play off this area and then I'll look for clear setups to to take. So uh, net positions 328,000. So obviously long-term bias is long, but I'll wait for a clear indication here to show me when I should jump on. All right. So the U.S. dollar. Let's take a look at the U.S. dollar. What do we see here? We see that. Um, long slightly increased from 48,000 to 51,000 but at the same time shorts increased all right and that came with this candle here so we were hitting a weekly demand zone and as we were hitting a weekly demand zone consolidating shorts got added to okay and now we can tell that that was in a pre preparation for this drop down now we've been waiting for this for quite some time right because we hit a, a three month CP supply zone months ago right up here and we were expecting price to drop down to this area here and so that's exactly what's happening so um, you know back at that time longs were extremely aggressive and since then they've become cooled off right cooled off and so uh, shorts were uh, neutral became very cooled off and now starting to enter into aggressive territory uh, net positions is still uh, a positive 34,000 long exposure dropped from 79% to 75% coloration of the cells is still blue turning a little bit reddish so slight 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 bearish bias but um, we're entering into areas that are higher higher time frame demand so I'm not going to be taking any short positions um, just wouldn't make sense so I'll be looking for long positions down in this area but once price get down there it gets down there I want to see long start getting added to I want to see shorts being closed off I want to see these cells turn green and that'll give me the indication that the move is ready to uh, to be made to, to the upside Aussie let's see what the Aussie doing is doing Aussie we had longs being closed out from 56,000 to 52,000 and we have shorts increasing from 30k to 45k big increase here that resulted in the percentage long um, going from 65% to 53% coloration of the cells are blue meaning hold off and don't do anything so we are reacting to a monthly wow here that didn't make a two to one so obviously confirmation is required got a nice bullish engulfing here created on the weekly providing some nice support so looking to take trades within this lower area here but I want to see longs being added to alright so this candle here is the longs being closed out and shorts being added to so that could have been the majority of this move to the downside creating this wick here that was being recorded all right and then the Wednesday Thursday Friday could have been the push up on that week let's take a look at the Aussie do 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 exactly what I said you see what I mean so so this is uh, five eight let me check something let's see what date was the eighth the eighth of May was to do was a Monday there you go 
8th of May was a Monday. And so let's take a look here. So 8th of May was this candle right here. So Monday, Tuesday, that's when the data was reported. Okay. And what do we see? Skip that back up here. That's when the data was reported. Okay, the data was reported on Tuesday here. And so what do we see? Shorts increasing and longs being closed out. Well, that's exactly what happened. It dropped, right? And then what happened on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, which the data does not show us? Demand coming in. So next week, we're, next week's report, we should see longs being added to and maybe even shorts being closed off from these uh, these 45 uh, this 45k um, number so exactly what I was thinking the wick on the upside is the demand and the drop down was what the data on the report is suggesting so I'm looking to take trades down here but again I'm looking for longs to be added to and I want to see shorts being closed out and I want to see the indicator turning green giving me the sign that institutions do indeed want to go long on the Aussie so US CAD um, longs increase for the one two three four fifth week in a row uh, and that happened during this candle of consolidation here at the daily weekly monthly supply zone so longs pushing up shorts closing out uh, the sales for the last two weeks are green a bright green bullish very strong bullish so last week's green sales uh, told me hey you know we were pushing up they were aggressive yes they have to be aggressive when they're pushing price up into supply now we get uh, we we have two weeks in a row where we have that aggression there. Well, we are still at the highs, right? So that makes sense. Very dark green here. Uh, net positive ninety eight thousand in positions, and now we're dropping. So next week is going to be very telling, okay? Because if next week we see long positions close out, maybe just a little bit, but then shorts being added to aggressively then that tells me they're hedging for a move to the upside from down here if we see longs being closed out and um, aggressively and shorts being added to aggressively then I'll be a little bit more uh, concerned about taking longs down here but my guess is that what we're going to see is longs being closed out maybe just a little bit and shorts being added to uh, aggressively causing this drop in price and then once we get down here to this area right here then um, I'd like to see those longs build up again and the shorts close out for a move back to the upside like that okay that should probably be well timed with the uh, US dollar hitting that monthly demand zone so that's what I'm gonna be watching I'm gonna be watching to see those two um, uh, working together hitting their areas of demand at the same time I'll be watching the institutions to see how they're playing this on the drop because that's going to give me an indication as to what's most likely going to happen down here uh, another good sign is that if you take a look at the average long position 65,000 and we're at 137 bullish bias average short position is 49,000 and we're at 39,000 below average these cells are telling us up these numbers here are telling us up so uh, very high probability price drops in here and then heads higher next is the uh, US Swiss franc uh, the US Swiss franc starting to become a little bit aggressive on the longs a jump from 23,000 to 25,000 shorts decrease massively from 8,000 to 3.9 thousand and uh, the coloration here on um, the cells for uh, the percentage exposure exposure is green bright green so long bias even though we're dropping well probably drop down a little bit further before we get a reaction once US dollar hits that monthly demand zone then we'll see the upward momentum kick in so not trading this pair right now 
the euro US dollar this one's the interesting one so we have uh, longs being very aggressive uh, long uh, positions are above average short positions are way below average uh, the coloration of these cells here are green uh, long exposure is 56 percent of their overall exposure net positions for the last two weeks are in the positive and we're now sitting at positive 36 37,000 positions all right so um, what does this mean we're heading inside a monthly supply zone without the US dollar hitting its monthly supply zone or demand zone uh, this is a w this 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 supply zone is not well formed and I'm not really impressed with what it had accomplished so this can easily be broken the way I have my uh, trend line has created a monthly Wow demand zone down here so what could easily happen is this area gets broken and then price retraces down here and then we have a, a big explosive move to the upside all right so um, longs are aggressive right now shorts are very cooled off all these things are telling me that price is gonna gonna head higher gonna penetrate this zone maybe even break through the zone um, and that's what I'm going off of right now I'm not opening up any long positions because uh, it just wouldn't make sense monthly supply is in control we do have to respect that also weekly supply is in control so I will be watching to see what the institutions do and waiting for the proper setups to form right now the best setup is to go long down here and uh, not to chase price that's that's what I'm that's what I see so um, let's go back to the euro for a second here let's open up the chart on the euro because I was doing some analysis this weekend and checking on things some things checking on some things let's see here so the US dollar has hit a uh, three-month CP supply zone but we haven't uh, hit this uh, CP demand zone here on the euro but uh, look at the strength of that move straight up boom and so um, so we're falling short of hitting that zone and reacting so strongly to the upside okay yeah so if you take a look at the three month uh, this is not a three month trend line I'm gonna sneeze one second no oh, went away yeah this isn't a three month trend line because uh, I mean you could you could say that it is but I mean it's, it's not obvious so I'm not I'm not considering it a three month trend line so I'm gonna take that off there monthly this is it right here six Hey, let me see here we go. Oops. Three and six month trend line. Let me see it on the six month chart. Yeah, okay, see that's obvious. Drop up boom, obvious. Drop up drop down. Obvious. This here is just consolidation. I mean, there's no really big higher highs or anything. On the monthly you can see drop rally sideways lower low drop so this is the the trend line for the monthly and down now some people would be drawing it like this I understand that this is the higher high and some people are drawing it like this saying hey price gets here into the monthly zone and then we drop monthly uh, trend is down so this makes sense or we're dropping like that we go like that yeah you could draw it like that but again for me the obvious one is this one here that's the most obvious and I think that's what most people are looking at so I'm I, I stick with that that's the decision I've made and I'm gonna be sticking with it all right so oh I moved that let's finish fix that okay let's get back to the pound 
pound US dollar. And uh, long is becoming aggressive, a jump from 44,000 to 48,000. In the meantime, shorts were being closed out. Uh, we see over the last few weeks, 135, 91, and 81. And that happens as we hit a supply zone. So we hit supply, and shorts get closed out. So that's a little bit worrisome if you think thinking that price is going to drop from this area of supply. Why would shorts be closing out if we're hitting supply? Shouldn't supply be filled? Right? Shouldn't we be filling in supply orders here? And therefore short positions should be increasing? So, taking that into consideration, uh, if you take a look at the latest two cells here, a little bit uh, slightly green, right? Slightly, slightly green. You see the blue here, and you see this color, slightly green. So slight bullish bias, but I'm not taking any long positions. I mean, we are hitting supply. Monthly supply zone right here with a, a zone nested right inside of it. Net positions are dropping. Negative 81, negative 46, negative 32. So right now, I'm not really doing anything. I'm, I'm waiting for uh, signs that the institutions are going to start adding some shorts again or closing off longs or maybe leaving longs, but adding shorts again aggressively for a move down here. This is where I'd like to take trades down here. And I'll even take shorts if the right trade setup presents itself. But right now I'm not touching this. Right now I'm considering this to be neutral, the bias. So I'm going to sit on my hands and not make any moves because we can't take longs right into areas of demand. That just doesn't make sense. US dollar Japanese yen. This one's very tricky because, and I have since drawn in this zone here. Here's another thing about my trend lines. So, another thing with my trend lines is when I have a, a big spike coming down like this, I draw my trend lines. You see how I drew a trend line there? Like that. Okay? Big spikes, I ignore big spikes. I tend to not draw trend lines based on the spikes. Uh, because again, based on my own testing and based on my own observations, I've learned that a lot more often than not, uh, trend lines that ignore the big spikes in price get respected later on. So based on that, that's why I'm paying attention to trend lines like this. And so based on a trend line like this, we had this zone that broke that trend line, and now we have price hitting that area and reacting. <coughs> Excuse me. So what happened when price hit that area? Well, we had um, longs aggressive as we were going up and shorts didn't really do anything it remained cooled off all right so not adding shorts which is interesting because if price was gonna drop down heavily down to here we would expect shorts to be added to but that's not happening in fact long exposure rises from 65 percent to 71 percent which is a big increase and uh, we have net positions going from 36k to positive 60k. So short-term bias is long, but we can't go long into an area of supply. Um, and uh, so I'm waiting for the right uh, setup to to take this one to the upside. I obviously would want this this area out before I go higher. But I'm not loving this chart. I'll wait to see what the US dollar does when it reacts to demand, and then I'll wait for proper setups on this chart to take it in the direction that the institutions want to take it, which at this point looks like they want to take it long. And so the Kiwi is the last chart, and uh, longs are cooled off, very cooled off. We used to be at 19K, now we're at 11. Uh, but shorts are also cooled off. We used to be at 31K, now we're at 23. Uh, long exposure drops a couple points to 33k, so short exposure 67. Uh, short term bias is nice and red, so it's bearish. And net positions increase from uh, negative 10 to negative 11k. So, are we going to get a drop them from this area and continue the move downwards? It's possible, uh, but we also have a trend line break here. Creating a new zone, new monthly supply, so we could get price to go up here and then drop. That would be well timed with the US dollar. US dollar still has to drop into that monthly demand zone, right? So if US dollar is dropping, 
this one can easily go straight up into this area of demand and then drop. I'm not taking any trades on this because as long as US dollar is dropping, I'm not going to be uh, taking any shorts on here. Once US dollar hits that area of demand, then I'll be looking for positions to take this to the downside. And plus, I want to see that the institutions start adding their shorts again because obviously they're neutral. Uh, they're cooled off on shorts for a reason. So I'm going to listen to what they have to tell me. And um, I won't be so aggressive to, uh, to look for short positions. Okay? So that is your analysis of the uh, institutional and hedge fund positions. And uh, on the report, I think we only have one uh, thing this week, the Canadian dollar interest rate release on Wednesday. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this report. hope it helps you with your trading this week. And until next time, trade well.